And now I'd like to invite another speaker from the same initiative. Um, and uh, I'd like to invite Thomas Wollner to join us, and he will add a new dimension to what we are all about here. All right, okay. Thomas? Welcome. Yep. Hello, everybody. Thank you for inviting me in. I've prepared a little um, paper, some, something to support me, because English is not my native language, and see how I can manage with the, with the slides. Um, Yes. Um, how many of you know Hansi Hinterseer? You know Hansi Hinterseer? Well, he's a pretty famous skier, and he is, has now become... Pardon me? A skier. He was a skier. He was a second in the World Championships, and he has now become... A, pardon me? Uh, he has now become the, uh, a, a, a very successful entertainer, singer in the Heimat genre. Um, he's probably one of the most famous uh, singers and entertainers in Austria. And I put him in front because I think uh, we need more creative people than fans of Han Hansi Hinterseer in Austria. Um, having said that, um, I have also to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Thomas Wallner. I'm a professor of uh, system thinking and supply chain management at the Upper Austrian University of Applied Sciences in, in Steyr in Austria. And uh, we actually have a master program called Supply Chain Management, where innovation is an integral topic. Um, we have this integrated in courses like entrepreneurship and digital products and markets. And we have also developed a very specific course format called COI, which stands for Creativity, Decision Making, and uh, Realization, uh, which makes sure that we have an innovative problem solving in management approaches. I'm also doing some research on innovation topics, and I'm hosting a panel discussion series on process innovation in Austria. So I'm talking with many people about these things and about innovation. I can tell you everybody in Austria, in an economic context, is talking about innovation, how important it was, how crucial it was, um, and um, how critical it was for uh, future successes. So let's have a look at the um, innovation, the, the innovation uh, scoreboard, the Europe, European Innovation Scoreboard. Um, and you can see that Austria is on a pretty comfortable upper middle range position um, and uh, has moved up seven notches since 2006. So Austria is actually among the catching up countries, uh, is actually one of those on the verge of becoming a front runner, a so-called innovation leader. So you may ask me, well, what is he talking about when he's talking, my topic is challenges to the innovation ecosystem in Austria. Um, well, it's not that simple. I think we do have quite some imbalances in the innovation ecosystem in Austria. Um, Let's investigate this a little bit further. Um, this is the so-called innovation map in Austria. Um, uh, this is actually the upper Austrian province. Um, and what you can see here are all kinds of institutions and organizations um, fostering, supporting innovation activities. Uh, when I looked at the details behind this map, uh, uh, what immediately struck my mind that, uh, was the fact that the notion of innovation was very much limited uh, to product innovation and technology. Sometimes with a special focus on certain technologies like mechatronics and things like that. As you can see, uh, this leaflet is co-published by the uh, Federal Ministry of Traffic and Innovation and Technology. So we do have an innovation ministry in Austria. Let's have a look how they are actually addressing the issue. And again, you can see all kinds of technology. Technology, technology, technology. So um, in the topics covered and, and the programs launched, um, and if, if you go to human resources down below, then you find again, um, and then again into innovation generation, which actually sounded pretty promising to me. Um, again, you have a program supporting, for example, young women uh, to, 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 uh, to make um, technology accessible to them. 
So I'm not against these kind of programs. Don't let me be misunderstood. But innovation must be more than that, especially when it comes to young people and especially, if you ask me, in Austria. So from my point of view, this is a pretty uh, limited view. So where does this come from? Uh, this view that um, innovation was something which happens behind closed doors in arcane R&D departments in secret laboratories or sec secluded circles. Where does this view come from? That our, uh, innovation is something which um, uh, where only a, cho a chosen few can take part and uh, launch a couple of products and make lots of money. Um, well, in Austria, public innovation activities um, are mainly driven by pressure groups out of the economic sector, like Chamber of Commerce and uh, Federal uh, Federation of Austrian Industries and other organizations related to them. So it's not really a surprise that Austria is pouring lots of money into company research projects. We do have the highest uh, share on government aid of innovation projects in Europe. Almost 1% of GDP uh, goes to the public innovation promotion programs. The lion's share of this three times as much as in Germany, goes into corporate R&D projects. This may be a cause for the mentioned very limited product and ROI-oriented uh, uh, view, which it's a short-term view. We've been talking about time yesterday. ROI is always related to time, of course. So um, how about Austrian society? This is one of the imbalances I wanted to point out. Uh, what I mentioned in the beginning. So but how about Austrian society as a whole? Uh, is Austria as a society, as a national community, innovative? Uh, let us have a look at another innovation index. It's the so-called Innovationsindikator Deutschland. And this is an extensive study uh, funded by the Federation of German Industries and the Deutsche Telekom Foundation. And it's based on 180 indicators, including soft indicators, which is important from my point of view. And here the Austrian success story sort of looks a little bit quite different. It's, it doesn't have this happy ending, which is uh, usually broadcasted in the official statements. Um, Austria is actually ranked 14. Um, and in the innovation climate, which you can see here, uh, we are ranked last out of 17 nations. Well, we have to be aware, this are uh, not the European, this is not European community. We do have a, a different sample. These are the 17 most developed countries uh, uh, in a global perspective. So this is worth a closer look, I think. The category social, uh, societal innovation climate is composed of the following sub-indicators. Attitude towards change, uh, consisting of attitude towards entrepreneurial risk-taking, openness and tolerance, and attitude towards women's employment. The second indicator includes, uh, is called um, attitude towards science and technology, uh, and this includes interest in science, trust in scientists and organizations doing research, and appreciation of opportunities and risks coming from scientific research. And the third indicator is, uh, uh, relates to social commitment. In each in each of these three indicators, uh, Austria is ranked last. So Austrian society doesn't really uh, seem to be innovation friendly and embracing uh, change. And these findings become even more disturbing when you look at the growing importance of process innovation and the potential which lies in the reframing of business model, uh, models and rethinking entire supply chains. Because focusing on these aspects means that you, that you have to include larger portions, larger uh, sections of a, of a company, often crossing departmental boundaries and also going to the outside world as well. Here, an innovative culture of the entire organization and or of society as such uh, becomes the fertile ground for innovation progress and uh, substantial change. If also in politics were genuinely interested in this um, aspect of innovation, this finding could mean a clear mandate to take action. So had, have, let's have a look at Austrian politics. How about Austrian politics? Are they innovative? In terms of political agility and innovativeness, um, Austria appears awkwardly paralyzed. Um, let me underpin this with findings of an expert in Austrian politics. It's Professor Anton Pelinka. He's the doyen of Austrian politician, uh, political uh, uh, scientists. In a recent speech about the 
Paralyzed Republic, held on a conference on the state of politics in Austria, Pelinka delivered a pretty accurate assessment of the political situation in Austria. Um, Austrian politics have become defensive. The Republic itself has become structural conservative, and the last great effort was the accession to the European uh, community. Since then, the big nothing. Visionary concepts of the future are not in demand. The Austrian educational system, especially the Austrian educational system, is affected by that. Compared to our net national wealth, Austrian education output has to be rank ranked at the very bottom of the list. This is, these are not my words, these are the words of, Mr. Uh, of Professor Pelinka. Excuse me. As you may have um, um, heard, Austria's universities are dramatically underfunded. The sit situation is so desperate that even the deans of the or, or, or university are calling to arms. They're actually uh, lining up with the students and, and organizing protests. So this is quite a, a sort of bizarre if you look uh, at, the, at the history of student protests uh, in the recent uh, decades. It always, always was against university establishments. Now they are lining up. You know, um, according to Professor Belinka, we must not expect the political sector to set any impulses. This has to come from the civil society, so we come to the same conclusion. Uh, I come from a very different uh, uh, path, I come a very different path, but in the, in the end we come to the same uh, conclusion. We are both system scientists. Yeah, we have, so what, what do we have to do? What do we have to do? Uh, let me first lighten up this a little bit grim look on the Austrian situation. It's not all that bad, you know. Of course, there is a lively scene of, of uh, all kinds of young dynamic organizations and quite a few people um, off the mainstream and, of course, there are new structures developing, many of them are in some kind of a grassroots movement. And they, they do need our attention, they really deserve our support and our energy, uh, which leads us directly to the challenges um, of uh, the in innovation ecosystem in Austria. The first challenge is we have to de develop the Austrian culture towards openness, tolerance, and attitude towards innovation and change um, to appreciate that. This involves a strengthening of these mentioned organizations um, and initiatives and bringing innovation and societal change more and more into the public discussion, into the entire inter educational system, into the entire educational system, and into the rural communities. That's where the Hans Hinterseer fans uh, live, you know, and we do have lots of them. Here the INCO movement comes in handy. So um, we do need more creative people than Hansi Hinterseer fans here in Austria. The, um, the second challenge is to develop the entire educational system with a special focus on the universities. According to the already mentioned German Innova Innovations Indicator, only 19% of the age bracket between 25 and 39 years old uh, is highly qualified in Austria, compared to average, again, 70, 17 countries, 38%. So this results in a critical sort, uh, shortage of a highly skilled workforce, which is even aggravated uh, by Austria's restricted immigration policy. Um, Austrian uh, companies were pretty uh, quick in going to new emerging markets, for example, in, in Central Eastern Europe. And at the same time, they were fiercely protecting our labor market against people coming from, from the same uh, regions. So um, we... And th this is even uh, 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 amplified by the fact that we do have the lowest uh, share of highly uh, educated people among immigrants, which means we don't let them in, and those we let in, they are not highly qualified. Um, and the third challenge is to enhance the financial preconditions for innovation when it comes to accessibility of bank loans and startup financing. In these categories, Austria is ranked 14th out of 17, and Probably this position has even worsened uh, during the economic crisis. So we have a lot to do. And as Stefan already emphasized, uh, it's the doing, isn't it? It's not the talking, it's not the complaining, it's not the blaming. We have to do it. So maybe we just have to start an eco-movement in Austria, isn't it? Thank you very much.